Well, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I am excited because we're ready tonight for Bible study. I look forward to Wednesday night's Bible study. It's a time for us to get into the word of God. And you know what I say. Let's see what God has to say about the matter. And then once we find out what God has to say, that's it. Oh, yes, this whole universe was created from the power of the spoken word that came out of God's mouth, that he spoke this world into existence. And God said, I based that on Genesis 1, and God said, and God said, and I tell you, he continued to speak. We get to know the mind of God through reading the word of God. The boundaries of the sea and the oceans, they can't go past the sand. Oh, no, no, no. God gave the word there, Jeremiah. And God speaks and God speaks throughout his word and declares concerning us. Let's dive into the word on tonight. And let's talk about our covenant of victory over lack. You have a covenant. I have a covenant of victory over lack. Get your Bibles, get your tablets, get your devices. Come on. We're going to dive into the Word of God and see what the Word of God says about our covenant of victory over lack. Okay? All right. Open your Bibles to 2 Timothy 3 and 1 in the Amplified. That's where we'll start tonight. Okay? It says, but understanding this, that in the last days will come, set in, perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. Isn't that something? Yeah. So, see, th this is what Paul wrote. And Paul saw in the spirit in that time, a time which stress would become so great that many people would not be able to bear it. Doesn't it sound like the time we're in today? All this going on, the stress that everyone's dealing with. And this was before COVID, so you can't just bottle it up to that timing. This was before the pandemic, that stress was a problem with mankind. People were just dropping uh, because of stress, okay? We're living in such a time right now. For many people, the pressure of just trying to hold on to a job or trying to keep food on the table has just become overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, and stress has become a major destroyer of families and marriages and a major destroyer of people's lives. Stress, okay? And hundreds of millions of dollars are being spent annually by corporations to uh, attempt to relieve their employers of stress. Yeah, they, they want to relieve them. And then the employees come up with ideas for the employees to be relieved of stress. I notice in many corporations, they're even adding a gym on. Many corporations now, they have added on nurses and doctors that can be right there on the spot because stress is a problem. Yeah, so I'm telling you. Also, I have found that ministers are leaving the ministry. Because of stress. They just can't handle the stress any longer. Just too much. Even children. Children are getting stressed out. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. And the more and more people that you find under stress, the more and more people are having sleepless nights due to stress. The stress that they are under. It's a sad thing. But it is a problem. I do know that God has made a way out of no way for mankind. And whenever I see that there's a major problem, I begin to go to the word. I begin to seek the father about it because if you don't, you're not exempt from it. Oh, no, no, no. But we can find a place in God's word, what God has to say about it. Well, I want to look at what David, we can look at many scriptures. I'm going to look at many of them tonight. Let's look, let's start with what David had to say. Go to Psalm 55, 2 and 3 and the Amplified. Psalm 55, 2 and 3. I am restless and distraught, and I am distracted at the noise of the enemy. This is David talking. Oh, glory to God. What did he say? Now, there's stress, and what it comes along with, uh -huh, what is synonymous with it, uh, is the voice of the enemy. 
screaming at you day and night, trying to convince you that there's no way out. Oh, the voice of stress. Mm, you can be so stressful that you just feel like running away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These thoughts came to David's mind too. Look at verse 6 and 7 of that same Psalm 55. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness. Salah. You know what that means. Now pause and think about that. Salah. David, you know, he everything was just so stressful. He said, I can just run away. You may not admit it, but I know you said that before. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I tell you, you just feel like, I mean, so much stress, so much going on from the problems. And it seems like there's never a solution. Oh. And this is what David was saying. And that's how many people are responding today. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I wish I had wings. I'd fly away. <laughs> Get away from all of this. Oh, it can be so stressful. I lost my sisters back to back, two of them. And I tell you, that was such a stressful time for me until, oh, yes, I could identify with David that you just feel like, oh, just running away. It is so stressful. Oh, but let me tell you now, this is when you have to turn to the word. This is when you have to see what the word of God says. All right. And because just simply running away is not going to take the pressure away. It'll run away with you. <laughs> now, this has nothing to do with the divine uh, door opening, leading of the Lord. I'm talking about stress making you want to run. Mm -mm. It won't take it away. One of Satan's number one tactics for producing stress today is lack. Look at it. Mm -hmm. Produce it today. That's one of his main tactics. Lack is to be in want, to be destitute to fall short, or to not have enough. I mean, you don't have enough to pay your bills. and You know, don't have enough to provide for your family. Don't have enough to fulfill your vision. Mm. Life can become very stressful. <laughs> but God never intended for you or I to be in lack. God never intended that. In fact, our covenant of victory enables us to overcome lack. Are oh, we going to talk about this more? Ooh. Let's go to David again. Go to Psalm 23 and 1. This was my husband's favorite declaration that he said all the time. Oh, my goodness. And you know what he said? Psalm 23 and 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And I'm telling you, my husband never wanted, never lacked, provided for his family, always had plenty. This was his favorite declaration right here. Then Psalm 37, 18 and 19 said, The Lord knoweth the days of the upright. Oh, I didn't give you time to get there, did I? <laughs> Go to Psalm 37, verses 18 and 19. We're diving into the word. We're going deep. Hallelujah. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, times of great stress. And in the days of famine, lack, they shall be satisfied. Woo! Satisfied. Satisfied is defined as to supply until no more is needed. Mm. Satisfied. Woo! Then look on down at verse 25 there in Psalm 37. Look at this. I have been young, and now am I old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Mm. We have a covenant. We have a covenant of victory over lack, people of God. Mm. God has made provision. For you and me, that we never experience lack. Never, if you dare to believe it. And if you dare to walk in it. Oh, I know that sounds broad, doesn't it? Never. Never. Even during COVID, you wouldn't have experienced lack. If you, if you believe it and walk in it, 
You never do it. I know I'm talking to some of you that you never ran out of your essentials. You had them. That was God. You had what you wanted to eat. That was God. You're walking in it. When you believe it and walk in it, there's a, we have a covenant of victory over lack. Going to talk about how you get it, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and it applies to everybody. Don't think it's to special people. It applies to everyone. Let's look at, go to Genesis 17 and 7. Go there now. I told you we're going to dive into the word. Genesis 17 and 7. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generation for an everlasting covenant. So what? This goes from generation to generation. God said, I'm just going to pour out generation to generation. Mm -hmm. Because you have a covenant of victory. Oh, yeah. A covenant. covenant. That's awesome, isn't it? A victory over lack. Now, according to Galatians 3 and 29, we are the seed of Abraham. Okay? And I and, and, I and you, we're to expect God to fulfill this promise. In our generation. All right? And so, when you have that covenant from God, you've got a covenant of victory over lack. The covenant. It's in his word. It's in his word. You begin to decree and you begin to declare what his word says, not after it's all over. That's praising God and thanking God. But in the midst of the enemy trying to say you're not going to have. In the midst of all we went through in, in COVID. You see, you'll be declaring. And you will never see lack. Those that did that, you never saw lack. Those that walked in it and believed God. There was no lack. There was no lack. Matter of fact, in our ministry, we were we were feeding people. We were making sure they had everything that they had need of. We, oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm telling you, we were there. We were doing that that we need to do, making sure everybody had. Oh, yes, a turkey on their table for Thanksgiving. Oh, we were just moving in abundance, and God moved in abundance. God is such a good God. Oh, yes, he is. God is a mighty God. Mm -hmm. You have a covenant of victory over lack. And I want to say, it, it, it won't happen without you enforcing it. That's what I'm saying tonight. See, it won't happen unless you enforce it. You begin to say it. You begin to declare it. See, you got to resist the symptoms of lack in your life. You can't cave into it. Oh, well, I guess we will. No, that's when you, you need to. I mean, you allow the strength of God to raise up on the inside of you and begin to speak his word. There's power in his word. Glory to God. Look, look at Psalms 99. Psalm 99. This is a glorious promise from the Lord. Psalm 99 in the Amplified. Come on, look at that. And then we're going to begin to, uh, you know, I'll just show you how to enforce it. <laughs> Psalm 99 and Amplified. The Lord also will be a refuge and a high tower for the oppressed. A refuge and a stronghold in times of trouble. High. Look at look here. Look. High cost. Destitution. Desperation. Mm -hmm. Trouble. See? High cost. Destitution. Desperate. See, in those times that the enemy is trying to bring stress on you, because, you know, there were times that you, when you needed masks, mask, face mask, they were so expensive. And then those that weren't expensive weren't being delivered. And oh, not only for us, John Q. Public, but let's think about the medical profession and all that had to have a certain kind of mask. They weren't able to get them. And all oh, so much equipment wasn't able to be gotten at high cost. And people became destitute. And they became desperate. All because of this. But oh, God is saying, there's no lack. There's no lack. Uh-huh. You got a covenant. Oh, yes. A victory over lack. So you, you don't give in to what's happening around you. That's my point I want to make. Do not give in to what's happening around you. Why? Because we've been redeemed. We're redeemed. I tell you. Mm-hmm. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my God reigns. I know my God will not fail us. <laughs> so what do you do? You begin to declare that you are redeemed from lack and want. Okay? 
let's look at how you can declare. Just don't look at some scriptures. Don't, it's not a lot of them, but some of them. And see, you begin to declare what God said in his word in Genesis 8 and 22. And you say, I sow my seeds in faith, knowing that the law of seed time and harvest is working in my behalf. You begin to declare Mark 4, 26 and 27. I expect every seed I have sown to spring up, to grow up, and to produce an abundant harvest. You begin to declare Job 36 and 11. Because I have been obedient to God and I have sown my seeds, I fully expect, oh, you let the enemy know, my days to be filled with prosperity and my years with pleasure. You begin to declare Psalm 115 12 and 14. And you said, because God has seen my sowing and his mind is continually on me, I am expecting more and more financial blessings and more and more increase to come into my life. Oh, yes. And you begin to declare Luke 6 and 38. I expect every measure to come that it be good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over on every harvest for every seed. I have sown. You begin to declare 2 Corinthians 9 and 6. I am entitled to and I am expecting a bountiful harvest because I am a bountiful sower. You begin to declare 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. I expect to have all sufficiency, more than enough, abounding in financial blessings so that I am able to sow into the good work of Cano's. Oh, glory to God that the Holy Spirit impresses me. How I should bless. Ah, you begin to declare Second Chronicles 20 and 20. And you say, I believe God. I believe what God has said. I believe what his prophet has spoken unto me. Oh, if you didn't know it, I'm an apostle and I'm a prophet. Oh, glory to God. I am receiving my season of abundant harvest. Oh, that the prophet has spoken. Therefore, I expect this harvest every day of my life. You begin to declare the word of God. That's your covenant. You have a covenant of victory overlap. And it is when you begin to declare and say what God says. When you say what God says, in spite of what's going on on the outside, God will come in and you will find yourself redeemed. Glory to God. Regardless of what's going on, and you not give in to what's happening around you, but you dare to speak God's word. God will begin to bring you up and bring you out, manifest and bring to pass, and you will see there'll be no lack. Oh, glory to God. Why? Because the Lord is your shepherd, and you shall not lack. Begin declaring that you are redeemed from lack and want. And let me tell you, that's the way it shall be. <laughs> Come on, give God glory. Come on, give him some praise. <laughs> Magnify his name. You are redeemed. Our God reigns. Oh, our God will give you the victory over lack in the name of the Lord. <laughs> give God some glory. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Oh, I praise him on the day. I'm thanking God for all that he has done, for his mighty acts. Oh, and the greatness of God that he's moving in this hour for his people. I thank God for you. Glory to God. I thank God for you obeying God. All the platforms are there on the bottom of the screen that will enable you to do that, that God has told you, spoken to you, given you, placed upon your heart to do. Oh, but I didn't feel nothing. I didn't hear nothing. Give God your best. We always give God our best because God gave us his best. For God so loved the world that he gave his only. Give God your best. God is a good God. I thank God for you. And know that you have a covenant of victory over lack. God bless you.